Okay friends, one of the first things we have to do to get started on our job is to safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheel's off the ground. After that, remove all of your lug nuts and then remove the wheel. To remove the caliper, we're going to move along to removing these slider pins right here. Let's use our 3 8 Allen head bit. Let's carefully push back our caliper piston. Remove your caliper. Set this aside, putting no pressure on your flex hose. Remove your rotor. Remove your axle nut using a 36 millimeter socket. Remove your washer. Use a punch and a hammer and break your axle free from the bearing. Remove your cotter pin and your 18 millimeter castle nut. Keep your castle nut on there a couple threads, use a hammer, bonk this free. Separate your upper ball joint from your knuckle and remove this cotter pin. Remove your ball joint nut using a one inch wrench. Just leave that on there a couple threads. Use your hammer, separate this area. I'm going to apply some pressure under this control arm so I can remove my upper ball joint nut. Let's carefully lower this down. Just keep in mind the knuckle might pull away and it could potentially put a tug on your axle. The next thing that we're going to do is remove our upper cam bolts right along here. So I'm just going to mark it so I know exactly where the original adjustment was. Now we're there, when we put this back together, we can realign it to where it originally was. Let's use a 21 millimeter wrench on the bolt head and remove the nut. Let's do the same to this one. Now we're just going to remove the pair of these. As you slide it out, you want to make sure that you save your cams and remember which side they go on. Now it's time to press our bushings out of our upper control arm. Pay attention to the direction it goes. It would go from the outside of the control arm towards the inboard aspect. I'm just gonna go ahead and take this, slide it down into my press like that. Now we're gonna take a cup that fits over this. We'll slide it right down, put it onto the control arm. Put this up on top, and now we're gonna gently press this, and when we do it, it's gonna press the bottom aspect up and into this cup right here. Now that I have it broken free, I'll continue on with something underneath it to help drive it through. There it is, friends. Now that we have the bushing out of there, let's make sure we clean up the hole. Now it's gonna be time to press in our new bushing. We remember that it needs to go from the outside facing in. When you look at this, you can tell that it's not completely smooth. It has like a little bit of a lip or a ridge right along here. That ridge is exactly where you're gonna press up to. This flat area right here doesn't actually rest directly against the control arm. Now let's go ahead and take a cup that fits along this outer edge right here. Rest right on there. We can continue on by pressing this down and into the control arm. All right, let's carefully press this in. All right, right there, I feel like it bottomed out. Let's release pressure. All right, that one looks great. Let's do the same to the other one. All right, we got both side bushings in. Let's get back over to the vehicle. Let's go ahead and slide this into where it belongs. You might have to tap it with a hammer. Let's coat the shaft area of the cam bolt with some copper never sees. Now we can put this in. We wanna make sure that we have the cam facing up. It doesn't work out as well if you have it facing down. Let's go ahead and install our cam on this one. We've got the beveled area. We want that facing in. Thread locker.
start, you're not on there. You have the locking side and then the flat side. You can tell which side was up against the uh, frame. Let's do the same to the other side real quick. There's a couple things that we need to do before we can continue tightening this up. First of all, we need to have it so it's at the normal ride height level. So approximately like this, you can see that this is pretty much level with the ground. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is make sure that our cam bolt lines up with our lines. Then we can snug these up, then torque them to 140 foot pounds. Now it's gonna be time to get the upper ball joint reattached to the knuckle here. There's gonna be a couple things that we need to do. We need to safely jack up the lower control arm so we can bring this up close. At the same time, we wanna to try to push this axle into the wheel bearing through the backside of the knuckle. Go ahead and slide this in. Line it up to where it needs to be. We'll start jacking this up a little bit. Be very careful not to shift your vehicle off of the lift or jack that you're on. Now we can take our nut. You wanna make sure that you have the castle end of it facing down. Now let's go ahead and snug up this nut. The torque for this should be 74 foot pounds, but as you can tell, it's gonna be very difficult to get a torque wrench in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten it up so it's nice and snug, and then we'll line up our cotter pin hole. I'm gonna go a little further here, line it up to the next one. Slide your cotter pin through and then lock it down. Let's carefully lower this down. Reinstall your tie rod, tighten up the nut, and then torque it to 48 foot-pounds. <laughs> the next thing you want to do is line up the castle nut with the slot on the tie rod itself. If it seems like it's not lined up, continue tightening until the very next one is. Make sure you put in a locking cotter pin. Now it's going to be time to get our axle nut back on here. I always like to use some red thread locker. Go ahead and put a little coating on there. You've got your washer. Then of course the nut. It's a good idea to replace the nut, but if you aren't, make sure that you use red thread locker. Now we'll torque this to 178 foot pounds. Before we can get the rotor on here, we need to clean up the mating surface of the bearing itself. You can use a wire brush, or if you have one of these, go ahead and use that. Once you have your entire hub cleaned down, let's continue on with some copper never sees. All right, now it's time to get our rotor on here. Go ahead and put it on. I'm gonna use one of my lug nuts, snug it up on there just so the rotor can't move around and rust can possibly fall in between this area and cause a brake pulsation. Now let's carefully slide the caliper over this. Slide it into place. Time for the caliper mounting bolts. Start them both in, we'll snug them up and then we'll torque them to 25 foot pounds. Start on all your lug nuts, snug them up, and then we'll torque them. Okay, once you have them all started on there, go ahead and get your wheels safely back on the ground, and then we'll torque all of the lug nuts to 120 foot-pounds. Torqued. All right, we got the truck all back together. What's left to do now? Safely take your vehicle for a road test down to your local alignment shop.